On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here. We are on the ground in downtown San Francisco at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. I've never been to the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. A pretty interesting uh, location for a small but growing conference, the Bit. Coin Conference, San Francisco, or excuse me, Blockchain Conference, San Francisco. We just had another Blockchain Conference about a month ago, so the Blockchain thing has really taken off, and it's interesting that it's Blockchain Conferences, not Bitcoin Conferences. So we've got a couple of guests lined up. We're excited to uh, jump into it. So our first guest is Aldo Carascoso. Welcome. He is the founder and COO of Align Commerce. Welcome, Aldo. Well, thanks for having me. So I just wanted to add, it used to be a lot of Bitcoin conferences. Now it's just shifted tremendously to all Blockchain ones. And you know you could see it throughout the years. Interesting. Yeah. So before we jump into that, why don't you give everybody a little background on on what you guys are up to and the company? Perfect. So Align Commerce essentially, you know, we allow businesses uh, in 60 countries to send and receive payments with each other through email, and we use the blockchain as a settlement rail. So you know we make all payments local. And uh, what's good about it is we're actually no longer using correspondent banks that make exorbitant fees. So that's what Align does. So, uh, so let's follow up on the blockchain versus Bitcoin. Mm. Uh, you were just on a panel um, in the main session, yes. and you just said that there's not as many uh, Bitcoin conferences anymore. They're blockchain. Yes. What are the differences between the two, and why do you see kind of the shift of focus moving away, necessarily the bright light, on Bitcoin, mm. and we're hearing a lot more about blockchain? Well, I, uh, I think the whole concept of the blockchain was introduced by Bitcoin, the currency. So I think Bitcoin, the currency, was a very good use case specifically to show the greatness of the distributed ledger of the blockchain. So what happened was, you know, you've got this whole Bitcoin um, trend that allowed people to send and receive, you know, um, value, essentially, um, in a uh, distributed way without needing anyone in between. So it became a trustless um, system. So, uh, and then now you've got this whole blockchain uh, revolution wherein you could apply this outside the use case of just uh, sending and receiving funds. Now, it's interesting on the on the Bitcoin piece because mm -hmm. I always thought Bitcoin would be a lot better off if it wasn't so speculative. Uh. You know, as a, as a vehicle for holding value, exchanging yeah. value, mm -hmm. you know, I want something a little bit more stable. And it seemed like a lot of the early adopters were much more about the speculation, getting in on early on something. Um, so I would imagine within a, a blockchain application, you don't necessarily have kind of this market volatility in terms of exchanging value. Yeah, I think one of the more important things is uh, Bitcoin and the blockchain, well, the, the public ones at least, they're coupled with each other. And, you know, we, you know, we always re refer to them as the yin and yang. Essentially, they work together right now, you know, to, um, you know, one is the use case, one is the protocol. And you're seeing a lot of companies actually take out this whole blockchain concept outside, again, of this transfer of value into, Use cases like the Internet of Things, you know, allow machine-to-machine -machine, uh, learning. Other, you know, larger FIs are actually using it to, to replace their old uh, payment processing or transaction processing um, systems with one that will basically save in, you know, a ton of fees. So, is it really eliminating friction? And, and what friction did you guys see in financial transactions that you decided to go after as a company? Because I think it was interesting in your talk, you talked about applications. Yeah. It's like anything else. It's right. really what is the application? What are you trying to do? So, what application did you guys seize on when you founded the company? Yeah, so um, we always say the blockchain can be used, you know, uh, for any company that's thinking of using the blockchain, they have to think of their use case. It's not based on ideology, nor is it based on currency. I think it's based on a specific use case and acceptance. Now, the use case that Align Commerce wanted to go after really was the cross-border payments use case. So, you know, typically when um, funds, uh, you know, are sent and received across borders, let's say you're sending funds to the Philippines, it would go through a series of intermediate, you know, or correspondent banks. Every time it hits a bank, you know, you have this fee, you know, like a toll fee. And then we realized that, you know, at the end of the day, the problem wasn't just the payment. The problem was even the settlement. The problem was even the reconciliation. So what Align wanted to do was essentially combine, you know, the payment, the communication, and the PII protocol into one. So we're able to, you know, couple the payment with the information at the same time. So the blockchain was perfect for this. And was there a particular vertical, a particular industry, a particular type of transactions where you guys saw the opportunity and jumped in? Yeah, I mean, we, we always saw that the small and medium businesses um, never had preferred relationships with their banks. Like, uh, you know, if you were an, an SMB, you, you know, you had to haggle FX rates, you had to source FX, and sometimes banks couldn't give you preferred rates. And then we realized that they actually, um, they provide a tremendous amount of fees. Actually, I think on our last count, $50 billion worth of fees 
are attributed to the SMEs. So essentially, we're trying to help these small guys play with the big guys by making all payments local. Okay. And then, so do you just take a smaller fee than they would get it from their bank because they're not working kind of on that preferred status? Is that how you guys make money? Essentially, Align Commerce, there's no fees to send and receive. We do have an interbank rate, which is 190 basis points above uh, what you find in Google or Reuters. Okay, great. So you've been at this for a while. It's 2016 uh, March. Where are we in kind of the adoption of, 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 of blockchain? We just saw a panel with Microsoft was up there, Intel was up there, uh, IBM is talking a lot about blockchain. Where are we kind of you think in the evolution of this whole thing? You know, what's interesting is uh, back in the day when we were, when I was attending panels three, four years ago, you would see none of the big institutions. And I'm actually going to be in, in another panel where it's all big banks, it's all big FIs, asset managers. And they're really, really interested in how they can use this. And, uh, and again, it's not just for you know, minimizing and making sure that their transaction processing fees, you know, they're trying to cut out their own, um, how do I say this, their own middlemen. They have their own. And you know, they're using the blockchain to essentially find ways to improve transaction processing, make it near real time, at the same time, save on fees. It's interesting, John from IBM said, the banks did read Clayton Christensen, so they are going to kill themselves before yeah. somebody else does. So that's good. Well, although thanks for spending a few times. Good luck on the company. We'll keep an eye on you, and uh, good luck on the panel this afternoon. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Absolutely. I'm Jeff Frick. We are live in San Francisco at the NASDAQ Enterprise Center at Blockchain San Francisco.